Hey guys, welcome back to the next video I have in a Keycloak series. The first two videos that I've done was basically just how to get Keycloak started running on your machine and how to connect it to an external uh, database in which I use PostgreSQL. And in this video, we're going to actually have a, Java a JavaScript application connect to it and have a user actually authenticate to it and actually register as well. So this is going to be useful for sites that you have that uh, just require user logins and user verifications. So let's get started here by uh, logging into Keycloak Web Console and we're going to create a new rail. So let's go ahead and create this realm and just call it realm1. Let's give it a few moments for it to actually save. Okay, now that it's saved, let's go ahead into the realm settings and we're going to modify a couple of things. One, we're going to actually allow the user to register. And we're just going to do require SSL to be none, just because we're running this locally on a machine and we don't actually have a certificate assigned to it. And now let's go ahead and create a client. Um, and we're just going to simply call this my app. So let's just go over here and click on the create button and just call it my app and hit save. And this is useful because uh, in your JavaScript code a little bit later, we're going to actually have it try to authenticate against this realm and this app. But before we get there, let's go ahead and select and add these two fields here for the valid redirect URIs. Without these set, then uh, when you actually try to connect to a free JavaScript app, it will actually not load the login page. So you do need that. And this web orange, uh, oranges. <laughs> okay, guys, a quick update on the valid redirect URIs. Um, the reason why that they're actually set to localhost 8000 is because later in this video I'm going to be running these applications or should I say this HTML file with JavaScript as a basically simple Python web server. You're going to see later I'm going to use the command python3 space dash m space http.server which basically runs anything on that folder location as if it was run on a simple server. And Python, uh, I should say, that script's actually going to run it as localhost on port 8000, which is why I have these valid redirect URIs be exactly that. Now, if you have your, you know, your application running on a different port or just a different IP altogether, you can specify that as the valid redirect URI. Web origins, we're going to just set it to the plus sign, which means it's the same domains as the valid redirect URLs. And we can go ahead and select save. So that's it here with the Keycloak web console with respect to the new realm. So now let's create a new workspace uh, for our JavaScript application to connect to Keycloak. So here I'm just creating another folder and then I'm creating a library folder. And the, one of the things we do need before we can create the app is to get the Keycloak JavaScript uh, basically dependency from the Keycloak web page. So you can see here, here's a line item for JavaScript for this 15.0.2. Let's go ahead and download the zip file. And what we're going to do now is basically move that downloaded zip file into our project workspace. And now that it's there, let's go ahead and unzip it. And there's quite a few files here that are, you know, unzipped. The only one we really need is the Keycloak JavaScript file. And we do need to reference this in the index.html file that we're about to create with some JavaScript to connect to Keycloak. So let's go ahead and create a file called index.html. And here we're going to create a very simple HTML page with some JavaScript in it. Nothing fancy. I just wanted to show a very simple application to connect to um, Keycloak. So here within the HTML header, we're going to go ahead and make that reference to that Keycloak library, which is the Keycloak.js file that was downloaded from the Keycloak uh, website. And this is a relative uh, reference to the file path 
from where the index HTML file is. And in this next script section, we're going to go ahead and create an initialize key cloak function that's going to be called on the HTML's onload um, onload event. So if you just follow this, uh, we can get this working pretty soon. So right now we're going to go ahead and initialize a new key cloak variable that is of type key cloak and it's going to contain three parameters. One is going to contain like the key cloak URL endpoint which if you recall from the previous two videos is localhost 8080 auth and for the realm we're going to go ahead and type in the realm we just created which was realm1 and for the client ID we're going to go ahead and create I should say we're going to reference the new my app that we created Okay, now we're going to actually initialize or call the initialize function key cloak object. And essentially, what this means is uh, what we're doing here is calling an onload uh, feature to say that login is required. So, when this function is invoked, it's going to try to connect to that URL, realm, and client ID, but it will require a actual login. So, we're going to just add this success. Um, result but we're not going to define it just yet and we're going to also add a catch for any errors exceptions that occur while trying to invoke this key cloak login we'll get back to the success part in a moment but here in the uh, catch part we're going to go ahead and just call this alert fail to initialize And I guess one thing to note, I'm going to fix it uh, a little bit later in the video, but I did forget to close the initialize key cloak function. I forgot to do the end brace. Uh, make sure you do that or else the page won't load. So just continuing on here on the body onload event, we're going to go ahead and call that JavaScript function, the init key cloak. And then we're going to create a couple of divs here and uh, essentially uh, reference them as placeholders 1 and 2 in an ID. And this is going to be important because we're going to reference this in the um, key click initialize success uh, result. So it's going to make sense when we get back to there. And let's just close out the body and HTML tags. And now uh, within the success, what we're going to do is actually just update those placeholders to indicate a couple of things. So let's just start typing this for the moment. Do this call to document get element I, uh, by ID. And we're going to reference the ID name here, which is uh, placeholder1. And within its inner HTML, we're going to simply add um, basically this HTML, HTML code, which basically says logged in within a header tags. And then we're going to go ahead and do this document get element by ID again. And this time we're going to reference the placeholder2. And its inner HTML is going to actually reference a logout link and this is going to be necessary for your application if you actually want the user to be logged out. So we're going to do an, uh, a, a link here to the specific logout URL. So um, it's going to be HTTP localhost port 8080 slash auth slash realms slash and the name of your realm. And in my case it's realm1 slash protocol slash open id dash connect slash logout question mark redirect uri and then just equal it to where you want it to be redirected to and i have rect redirected to http localhost port 8000 and now what we're going to do is invoke this python 3 command python 3 dash m http server and this is very useful because wherever you have HTML or JavaScript files, 
when you enter that command, it's going to run it as if it was hosted on a server. And if you notice there, it also said, you know, it's going to be running as localhost port 8000. And here you can see that the page is not loading up. And let's go ahead and actually fix that issue where I forgot to put the closing brace. And now if we refresh the page, it should bring us to the Keycloak initialization page, uh, which is basically the login page. And since we don't have any actual users right now, we can go ahead and register a new one. And let's just add some, like, you know, test input information here. I'm going to create a new user called test user and just create a password and confirm it and click register. You can now see that the text logged in and the logout link is actually displayed. And that's exactly what we have in the code there that we had in HTML and JavaScript. And you can see that clicking on logout actually brings us back to the home page here or the login page. So just kind of referencing what we just see that what we just saw there. This is the link that was clicked on and that's the URL that got the user logged out to. And you can see that that's the text that was seen after we successfully logged in. So once again this first portion here just defines a key cloak object and like the URL realm and client ID is trying to authenticate against. This line here is basically saying to initialize key cloak by requiring the user to be logged in. This section handles the successful login, and you can see how the placeholder 1 and 2 here is referencing those div IDs in the body part of the HTML. So again, if we go back here and just uh, log in, one thing that you'll notice interesting um, if you go to the Keycloak web console and you go to the realm and to the client, if you go to this sessions tab and you click refresh or just go there, you'll see that this active sessions is one. And if you do show sessions, you'll see the actual user that's logged in, which is us right now. So as an example, if I log out and I go back, I'll probably have to refresh. But you can see that there's no more active sessions, which is very cool, because through this web console you can see the amount of users that are actually connected. So just for like I guess one last example, let's go ahead and create like another test user. And just call it test user two. register once again we're in the logged in page and if we go look at the sessions just quickly refresh you can see that there's one session now and you can see that this is test user 2 also if you go to this user sub tab and do all uh, view all users you can see the users that are actually registered to this realm and you can see the test user and test user 2 So that sums up this tutorial guys, uh, hopefully it was useful, if you thought that it was, don't forget to uh, basically like uh, and subscribe, it will be very useful and very helpful to me, because um, I would like to create more content and I know I can definitely do so with your help as well. So thank you so much guys, hope this was again helpful for you guys, and I'll see you next time.